Hi everyone, welcome to Practice Problem Stock 02. In this one, I'm gonna put your knowledge of accounting for stock issuances to the test. So here it is. Flyer Core was incorporated on April 17th, at which time 500,000 shares of $4 par value common stock and 200,000 shares of $10 par value 8% cumulative preferred stock were authorized. It's always a lot to say when talking about uh, preferred stock. On April 20th, Flyer Court issued 100,000 shares of common stock for $6 per share. On April 22nd, Flyer Court issued 20,000 shares of preferred stock for $800,000. Record the journal entries for the issuance of stock. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can do this on your own. And when you're ready, come on back. I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So there's really only two dates here that we have to worry about from an accounting standpoint, and that is April 20th, when the common stock is issued, and April 22nd, when the preferred stock is issued. It does not matter when the company was incorporated and did the original um, authorizations of the stock. That is not economic activity. That is just the approval process to then later on lead to the issuance, which is economic activity. So on these days, you are issuing that stock for cash. So on both days, we are going to have a debit to cash. On both days, we are issuing stock. On the 20th, we're issuing common stock. On the 22nd, we're issuing preferred stock. And so now we're going to have to do some work mathematically to figure out what are these things being valued at. So we're going to start with the 20th, where we are issuing the common stock, and it tells us that we issue 100,000 shares of common stock for $6 per share. So 100,000 shares, $6 per share, means we are getting total cash of $600,000. So I'll just make a note on here that is $6 per share times 100,000 shares. All right, now a common mistake I see students do is they will then say, okay, common stock, $600,000, and that is not necessarily correct, and it is not correct in this problem. The reason for that is because the common stock account can only track the par value of the common stock, not anything additional that you receive due to market forces. So when we look back at the approval, we see that what was approved was 500,000 shares of $4 par value common stock. So the stock has a $4 par value and 100,000 shares were issued. That means we are only going to credit the common stock account for $400,000. That's $4 par times 100,000 shares. The remaining 200,000, because we did receive 600,000, gets credited to additional paid in capital, usually shortened APIC, related to common stock, $200,000. That is simply the difference, the excess, 600,000 cash minus 400,000 attributed to par gives us the 200,000 excess or additional paid in capital. So that's the completion of our 420 journal entry. Now when we look at our 422, in this case, it actually told us the cash that we received was $800,000. So we don't need any math on the cash on this one. So we're gonna debit cash, 800,000. But we still need to go through the same process of allocating the cash between par and additional, right? And so for the preferred stock, it did tell us that um, the authorized shares was 200,000 shares of $10 par value, 8% cumulative preferred. So we have a $10 par. It told us we issued 20,000 shares. Therefore, 200,000 will go to the preferred stock account. That is the $10 par times 20,000 shares issued. And now we know that we are going to have additional paid in capital, specifically for the preferred stock, of $600,000. That is simply the excess, 800,000 cash received, minus the 200,000 attributable to the par value. 
All right, that was it for accounting for the issuance of stock. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.